uh, tutorial. Uh, what we found, though, is that using the residualized approach to evaluating a dependent variable, rather than using ANCOVA, has produced a non-significant result. So therefore, I can't reject the null hypothesis of no differences between females and males on in cranial capacity controlling for body size. But in the ANCOVA I performed, I did find a statistically significant effect. In fact, it was it wasn't even close. It was very statistically significant. In fact, I'll do it again right now just to show you. General linear means, univariate. Sex is the fixed factor. Cranial capacity is the dependent variable. And then body size is the covariate. And um, options, display means for that. And descriptors, effect size. I'm blowing by this because I'm going to assume that you've looked at the ANCOVA a series that I've done. See, we've got the sex is f equals 6.65 with a significance of 0 0.01. That's a big difference. This is very, you know, statistically significant. Uh, p equal 0 0.011. But when I residualized the cranial capacity variable and then did uh, a, um, a t-test on it, or a one-way ANOVA on that, I did not get statistical significance. It was 2.12 and 1.48 uh, f and p value, respectively. So why does that happen? Uh, so first of all, that's a big difference in the results. And all things being equal, uh, you would always use an ANCOVA rather than analysis of residuals approach. Why it is that people use analysis of residuals rather than using ANCOVA is a total mystery. Maybe sometimes they do the ANCOVA and they don't get a significant effect and therefore they go to the residual approach because they know there's a chance they might get different results. I mean, that would be a very, that's a very cynical approach, <laughs> cynical attitude about why people might do that. Now, I'm going to show you why this happens, the biggest reason why this happens. And it's because that uh, ANOVA, ANCOVA uses a pooled, a what they call a weighted pool estimate of uh, the covariation, the, the beta weight, the unstandardized beta weight between the covariate and the dependent variable. All right, so it just uh, it it doesn't use the whole data set, unlike the residualized approach. In a residualized approach, the whole data set is included in the analysis, so males and females together, and then it gets this uh, beta weight of 97.30. Okay, and it's used that to help estimate residual very uh, estimates for each person in the data set. But what ANCOVA does is that it does the co analysis of co uh, it does the residual it does the regression for males and females separately, and then it calculates an average between the two. And you'd think, well, we assume regression, homogeneity of regression, and therefore the results should be exactly the same, but they're not, because in reality there's sampling fluctuations, and sometimes a difference is almost statistically significant, but it's not, and it's still going to have an impact on the results. And I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, in terms of what the ANCOVA is doing behind the scenes. I'm going to split my file based on sex, and I'm going to do a re do the regression again to show you that the um, covariance between cranial capacity and body size factor, expressed as an unstandardized co uh, beta weight, are actually different. Even though they weren't statistic, they weren't found to be statistically significant based on testing that interaction effect, sex by um, body size, yeah, and I'm referring to the ANCOVA video series that I've done. So the, these are, this is the output for females for the linear regression, and it's got uh, unstandardized uh, beta weight of 76.95, okay? And then for males, the unstandardized beta weight is 27.73. So if you take the average of that, 79 and 27, or 77, rather, let's calculate it exactly, 76.953, plus 27.732 divided by 2 is 52.34. So that's the average of the unstandardized beta weights together when they're estimated separately. And that's the approach the ANCOVA uses to estimating uh, the standard, the error variance, uh, the sums of squares error to actually test the hypothesis. Uh, but in the 
when I regress the whole sample size together, males and females together, I get 97. So when you average males and females separately, you get 52 as an unstandardized beta weight. But when you do the whole sample together, you get 97. So that's the main reason why ANCOVA and analysis of residuals do not produce the same results. Now, which one is more accurate? People argue the ANCOVA is the more accurate. Um, in cases where the two the groups have exactly the same co uh, unstandardized beta weights you won't find any difference but as they begin to deviate you will start to find differences um, in this case it's f it's complicated even further by the fact that the sample size is unequal females are 60 and males are 40 and so the ANCOVA doesn't take that into consideration it's just giving them equal weighting associated with their unstandardized beta weights uh, when it does the analysis it d gives it equal weighting so that's another issue that complicates uh, matters and I'm going to do that in, a, in another v uh, video series I'm going to deal with the issue of unequal sample sizes in analysis of variance and analysis of covariance but just suffice it to say that it makes a difference uh, but for the purposes of this video analysis of residuals and then doing ANOVA on that versus ANCOVA will give you different results you should based on the papers that I indicate that I showed you on Google Scholar you should always use the ANCOVA approach. Uh, I'll end the video there. Thanks for listening.